You're still watching Ways. Um, today we will be focusing on child molestation and how it can be curbed. Child sexual abuse is frighteningly common and hugely dam damaging. Our guest will be telling us how to identify signs that a child is being sexually abused and why it's important to act if you suspect a child is being abused. Now, Ibiduni Alaki Jaladapo is a retired director of the Lagos State Ministry of Health. She is a consultant on child, adolescent, and women's health as well as a senior officer at Women, Law and Development Center, Nigeria. She's also a member of Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team. Now remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet to us at Plus TV Africa or at Weisha Africa one with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp or on 081-8038-4663. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, Ibiduni. Thank you. Where do we start from when it comes to, because um, we, we think sometimes these things are far-fetched, but with the, the rise and the awareness with social media, we've seen that this thing has, you know, it's coming and it's coming in different tranches when it comes to child sexual abuse. Not taking the, the fact that it had actually started a long time ago. A lot of us now, I mean, when we were, that were born in the 80s and the 70s, we experienced it. But we didn't have a name to it because it was somebody in the house or something and all of that. So where do we start from when it comes to child sexual abuse? Where? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I think the usual. First, we started with the word molestation. Mm -hmm. It's a big word because you can molest, you can molest an adult as well. But be it as it may, our focus is on child molestation. Mm -hmm. Child molestation could actually, apart from the sexual, you actually have the physical, you have the emotional, you have the neglect, the maltreatment, all these are child molestation or child abuse, as it is now called. But be it as it may, if we go proper to the child sexual abuse which we are looking at this time around, you find out that usually it starts from the home. You want to say that an abuser is somebody. Yes, you can have an outsider, but many mm -hmm. times you have somebody, a close relative. Mm -hmm. The person we call uncles, the one we call aunties, mm -hmm. the one you call daddy, the next door, the security guard, the school teacher, because it can't happen anywhere. Yeah. In the churches, it's there, the, the imam, the pastor, the reverend, it's in the playground, it's in the school compound. So it's, it's something that is all over and surrounding a child. Mm. But the most important thing about um, child abuse is the fact that when you're looking at it sexually, it's like you find out that the abuser or the perpetrator tend to groom the child. Mm. Grooming actually takes place. And when grooming is taking place, the person first of all targets that child. Mm. Oh, I think I like to have this child. The brain tells that person that this is my target. No, they actually think it like I want oh, to Oh, yes. This child. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not as if it's unplanned. It's not as if it's on think of. Because wow. when grooming is a system, it's a process. So a process means that I'm planning something. So grooming is, first of all, getting the child to be familiar with them. Oh, of course. Because first you yeah. know your target. Mm. So Once you identify your target. The vulnerability that this child, I can target that child. You now, look, you now look for the vulnerability, the gaps. So that's another process. So you're going to fill in so that shocking. gaps. So that filling that gaps is that, oh, I think this child has issue with money. Let me start giving this child money. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think for me to get this child, this child is very attached to the parents or the brother. So you're going to befriend that brother wow. or buying them gifts or becoming a family friend. You know, a trust, you become a trusted, quote unquote, hand that they can say, oh, I'm leaving my child with this person. Or when my child is this mm. person is happy. So that is a stage of grooming. So once you become that attached, that trusted to the caregiver or the parents or the teacher or the malam or the guest man in the school, so what that happens? You now start abusing that child gradually. So what do you do? Take the child for swimming, watch him together. Oh, it takes my child out, makes my children happy. And then you now isolate that child because now, you know, the child is now your property because we've been able to go through that stages. process, all the processing, all the stages, there, there is that trust. And of course, it becomes your property. And that child now will now trust you. Without you, the child is, quote unquote, not ready. Wow. wow. 
You know what I find interesting from what she just said now? Because I think beyond myself, a lot of people would think that it's not something that is strategic, that it's maybe I got tempted mm. or for some reason I was, you know, turned on and I you know, just had to One use... Yeah. It, I, 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 yeah. Didn't, I didn't know that up until now, that it's actually strategic. Like, you start planning from my head. Like, people have deliberate thoughts in their head. <laughs> I want to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to abuse this child. It's sick. But anyway, do you have like current statistics? Because we checked, and so far the statistics are. Um, we saw I think, one in four girls yes, one is and four. one in ten boys. Yes, mm. and that is that is yes. the W two the UNICEF UNICEF yes. statistic. Yes. But then the Lagos State and then the Child Protection Agency in Lagos State, because you have a lot of NGO working on all you know, we're working parallel lines. Okay. So what, what Lagos State Government actually did in 2007 was to say, oh, let's work as a team so that we encourage NGOs. So you find that the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team is just a group of people, whether media, religious, NGO, individuals, mm -hmm. groups, working with children yeah. to say, oh, now when you have this thing now, please let's have the data. Because one of the problems we have in Nigeria is the data. Well, if you go to the Ministry of Youth, if you go to the Child Prote Protection, you're going to have data there, rather than citing the one in four by UNICEF. Mm -hmm. But be it as it may, it is still underreported. Okay. So the data you're going to have may not be the real right. data. One, mm -hmm. it is underreported for so many reasons, no cultural, religious, stigmatization. And then you have a situation where even NGOs are not even sending in the data because there's this lack of trust for now. Yeah. But mm -hmm. we'll get there. So we're going to have our data and we'll be able to say, oh, yes, this is what we now have in Nigeria, or this is what we now have in Lagos. So really not all the states have even embraced it, mm -hmm. even though the law is there, the policy is there. Some states don't see it as anything. Yeah, okay. Please. So when um, cases are reported, um, first of all, I'd like to know how, um, what is the jail time? for people that are convicted of in this case and also what does Lagos state government do or what what do we do to help the victims first and foremost life imprisonment life oh. life oh, imprisonment oh now you go to that because wow. i think government needs to sit up i mean government needs to tell people that oh we're not taking it lightly it is oh. life imprisonment okay. It is when, especially when it comes to sexual abuse. Yes. You know, we have different types of molestation. You have yeah. physical, you know. But when it comes to sexual, it is life imprisonment. There is no way out of it. That is number one. And you know, we've had some tried, successful cases in Lagos State. How yes. Cases, yeah. um, at least I, I, I could remember three we had. I mean, I don't want to mention the schools now where yes. they took yes. place because mm -hmm. we have a lot of them. But at least we could boast of about four now in Lagos State. The one that I could remember here, but we have a data. We are, we are actually, we're not taking kindly to it okay. when it comes to child. Okay. That's why we are very particular about the Child Protection Agency. You, so you mentioned something earlier about grooming, yep. you know, saying that, you know, once the, um, the predator identifies, you know. So are there things that, you know, in your years of this, you know, practice and all of that, have you been able to interview the abuser? to understand what goes on in their mind. Like, what do they look out for? What makes me prone to abuse? So if an abuser sees me, what are the things that he's looking at that makes me, makes him pro, makes me a victim, you know? Because um, I worked closely with an NGO. Okay. I still go there once in a while. And what we do is we go into secondary schools and we talk to young girls, you know, and we teach them. Because one of us was sexually abused several times. I mean, the parents took her to the pastor, the pastor abused her, the parents took her to this one, uncle abused her like that. So she always shares her story. And at the end of the, the what's it called, the, the discussion, we usually have it about one hour. We tell them to write, write down their questions. And we've, we've seen all, I've seen it all. I've seen the one that says currently her father is abusing her, currently the uncle, a driver. We've seen all cases. Even the times that we saw father, we brought the attention to parents. Parents say it's a family issue. Yeah. Mm. Do you understand? So, first of all, one question is, what do they see that makes, them, makes me a victim of abuse? That's number one. Number two, even when they are now, when you rat them out, mm -hmm. the younger reports and all of that, and they start to do all this family issue matter, how would the government tackle that? Um, okay, thank you. First and foremost, let me go to what goes on in the mind of abuser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say, one, is Satan. There's no Satan anywhere. Two, a lot of people will say it's alcohol. No, that is not right. A lot of people will say, oh, I was drunk or I was pushy. That is not true. 
But then when people say, oh, one thing, one thing that is clear is that saying that, oh, is the way she dressed. No, I refuse. Mm. And counselors, trained counselor, professor will say that, no. If it is the way somebody dresses, what do you see in a month old baby? Yes. Is it the breast or the nakedness or what? Mm. I, I mean, what, what are you seeing? What is there to attract? So the issue of, oh, it's because she's walking naked. Oh, it's because she's not wearing this. Oh, it's because she's attracting me. I refuse. So what goes on in the mind of an abuser, that is for the psychiatrist to examine the head, whether this person is OK. Yeah. But then you find out that most abusers have actually been abused at one time or the other Thank during you. their lifetime. Mm -hmm. wow. So an abuser or somebody that has been abused eventually Eh? They don't have the opportunity of having psychotherapy, having good cancer. You know, you have to go through this stage where you come to term with is that, oh, this is reality. That was my past. This, this is, is my, my present. Future. And this is where I'm going. This is my future. You are likely to abuse. Most abusers have been abused themselves. Mm. Oh, interesting. So find out. Most abusers, find out. Most perpetrators, they have been abused and they never had the opportunity of going through therapy. Mm -hmm. So healing never took place. Yes. Because you see, an abuse does not stop on the day it has been reported or the person has been abused. That is when the victim starts to suffer. And until the victim is able to let out, it could take years, it could take months until the victim is able to come to term or go through therapy or appreciate the fact that, oh, I need to move forward. Healing must take place. Talk to somebody until those processes mm. are complete. You find out that no, yeah. no, 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 that person too is going to actually even abuse somebody. Wow. Most serial killers are people that have been abused Absolutely. and they want to take revenge. Yeah, because I, I read. Let me quickly read the statistics, and faith yeah. will come to you. They said about eighty percent of twenty-one-year-olds were abused as children. Yes, they, they met the criteria for at least one psychological disorder. That's number one. 14% of all men and 36% of all women in prison were abused yes. as children. Yeah. Um, abused children are less likely to practice um, safe sex. They are to get greater risk of getting STDs. The list is endless for the outcome of abuse. So if you are saying all of this now that the perpetrators were once abused, if you check their history and all of that. So do you think that jail time and all of those things will actually curb it. Would it solve the real problem? What would be the holistic approach, you know, to solving the problem? Because it's it's a circle. It's a repeat. It's, it's yeah, a ripple effect. Cycle. Yes. You know, you abuse me, I abuse you. Yeah. Then I you go on to abuse. You know, that person grows up again and abuses them. So it continues. It's a very vicious circle. So how do you think would be the best way? Because I don't think um, jail time, because some people yeah. know that they're going to jail for life, and they still do it. Mm -hmm. So are we not supposed to be approaching it from a psychological point of um, view? Yes, you do. Funny enough, you found out that you've had, of, even those that other criminals, when they're in jail, you now have NGOs working with prisoners, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. They go to jail to reform them. So if an adult, quote and unquote, abuses a child, she, he, he or she, because boys have been abused too, goes to jail. But if you have child abusing child another to child, child because yeah. let's not forget yes, that here in Nigeria, that. anybody below 18 is a child, and mm -hmm. you are not expected to give consent. Mm. So, in other words, if a child abuses a child, usually you don't have children going to prison, or they are not supposed to go to prison, even according to the law. Yeah. So where did they go to? Remind us. Correct. 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 A lot of angels are actually working even behind the scene with abusers yeah. because you want abusers. And that's why we have, okay, the Lagos Domestic and Violence have what they call the, the, the psychotherapy unit where you have psychologists working with them, even abusers as well as yeah, the victims, the victims yeah. themselves. Yeah. So because you want everybody to heal. Until you take care, you take care of both parties, it's yeah. not going to end. It's going to be going around. Going around the yeah. Yeah. So the World Health Organization reports that child sexual abuse happens long before um, the age of five for most of them so what is mm. the youngest case that you've had of heard of in lagos i think about a week old mm. oh, oh my goodness you see, um, maybe, maybe maybe for this let, let's get something clear you see sexual abuse is not about permit me to use the word the penis and the vagina 
we have five oldies so okay we have five holes in our body mm. put it that way mm -hmm. you have the ears the nose. you have the nose you have the mouth then you have the put the red the nose yeah. and then you have the vagina mm -hmm. so whether you take a stick a wood straw pen viral finger whatever you want to call it you put it in any of those things in any of those holes it is mm -hmm. a sexual abuse one week oh. yes so it goes beyond it goes beyond then that people look at because or because you have different types of sexual whatever these yeah. styles yeah mm, you, have, yeah. you, you have, even have the oral you have the yeah. inner, you know all those type Name of things it. even watching pornographic film is a sexual abuse whoa like what if, can you, they, yes, if you yes. let a kid watch a pornographic oh, movie it is it is it is it is and then you, and then sometimes even you have it where apart from watching from some people actually even walk naked so how do we what can so when you walk naked wow. in front of a child so i believe i believe that's make it make it more easier than we do nick <laughs> well you know what this wow. is really sickening no, but, this is but i believe that there are three arms that can solve this problem okay. um first of all the family yes. okay the community and the, the government, government. Yes. so what can these three arms do okay um first and foremost you have the family first and foremost you know there's a law in lagos where we say you're a mandated reporter hmm. mandated means that it is mandatory you Would don't you? have an option b if you're a caregiver, you work with a child or whatever you have to do with a child, whether at home, wherever. If a child is being abused and you are in the know and you refuse to inform the authority and government finds out that, oh, you are in the know, but because it's not my business, yeah. as a material reporter, you are as guilty as the abuser. Mm -hmm. But what are the signs? Yeah. Not, so yeah. community, because we need to... Uh, okay. okay. Community. So, now, with regards to the community, we are actually even working with the community. One community, we expect them to report as well. That's number one. And then we are working on community because in the situation where you report an abuser and you come back and the community say you have to leave our community. Hmm. Or why did you report Lagbaja? This is our ballet. This is our pastor. It can't be. They know their limits now. Yeah. We are working on them. Now, and of finally, course, the government, government, yeah. There's the Child Protection Agency. That is number one. We have our hotlines in Lagos State, that is number two. And when children are, are in fact, the schools have the, make sure that any school where your child goes to must have gone what the child protection law. They train them, they train teachers. Mm -hmm. Bring your teachers together, train them on it. It doesn't have to be a formal setting. Everybody must say that, oh, I know it. I've read it, we've been trained. So that I ignorance agree. is not an excuse, excuse because you know we definitely yeah. take it So one of those things that they put camera in your school. Yeah. Hmm. There are lots of things. So many Quality things that can be done. Yeah. Thank you so, so much, really. Wow. It's really, really, really Such heartbreaking, an eye honestly. Opener. All right, so thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Next we'll have Dr. Kemak Onye Nawichia. Please stay with us, we'll be right back.